when we were thinking about okay what do we talk about that we can share with other people i feel like bayanihan is one of those things that we're seeing a lot of now but i do think there's a way to to deepen it so we can understand it a little bit more and have it be something more intentional because the thing i okay the thing that I like is whenever big things happen, like Bagyo or something, you see everyone helping out. And then after that, it's like, well, what? Uh, we go back to treating each other like, can we curse? Yes, we can curse in this thing. Yeah, like shit, right? <laughs> oh gosh, I hope nobody has kids watching. <laughs> I don't think. Anyway, yeah, yeah, that's true. And then when you said that as you were researching, like you you wrote about bayanihan and how it was about community so i'm like oh okay we should yeah. we should talk about this this is really something that we we need right now yeah yeah but i think before that we have to introduce a bit about like what are we doing and who are we right. and like why are we trying out this whole thing so right. okay do you want to go okay. first sure so hey everyone, those who, who aren't our friends, Elijah and I have known each other since high school and we've been just friends ever since. I think we've gotten closer actually when we started working. Mm-hmm. Like I think there's just been a lot more that we've been able to bond over, even if you're from different lines of work. Um, so me, hi, I'm Nina Guno and I write for a major news website. So I'm a journalist and... Uh, I just want to clarify also that my views here are my own, not not <laughs> anything to do with my company. Um, so what I like about writing the news, besides researching and learning stuff that are new, is like learning more about our shared humanity. And I think it's also why I'm so drawn to features, um, human interest stories, even more than the usual hard news stories. So yeah, and here with Elijah, I think, um, we've got to we've gotten to talk a lot more about that being more self aware as individuals and connecting with other people. Yeah. Yeah, and so I'll introduce myself. Uh, hi, I'm Elisha Corpus. And so for me, I'm coming from a place of in my job, I really do have to ask questions, and we value questions over giving answers because that's where you see change happen, and so. My job is I'm a consultant. I work with different companies and I specialize in culture transformation. Culture transformation is this huge thing where you have to figure out like what behaviors and mindsets should employees try to imbibe and practice. And then it's figuring out how do you craft an environment that will lead to that. And then I also do coaching, which is something I've done with Nina. And a lot of that is really about questions which brings us i guess to explaining what ask yourself is yeah so i'll go ahead and do my take on it so we were supposed to do a podcast really <laughs> like that's the honest answer but with this ecq we just we we couldn't go do a recording or do a podcast and we thought a facebook live might be nice and i think where i'm coming from is Change is more sustainable when you're asking questions. And so I appreciate it more when I'm being asked reflection questions or guide questions versus being given advice, which a lot of articles and I don't know, like people out there in podcasts or YouTube videos, it's all about giving advice, which are very, very helpful. I should say that, but I think for me, It would make more sense to a person personally if we can reflect on our own time and we're prompted by what do we think about so that we can really change hearts and minds. So what's your take on Ask Yourself? You know, I just realized also, um, not just my line of work, but even in the company I work in, like the asking is really the the key word there. Yeah. uh, So... I'm used to asking a lot of questions also. And I enjoy doing interviews more than being the interviewee. I guess because I love learning about stuff. So, um, like you said, there's a lot of advice out there, a lot of articles, expert opinions out there. Um, I also noticed 
I guess because there's more research abroad or in the more developed countries, a lot of the advice comes from that place. And mm-hmm. I don't think it fits necessarily <laughs> our context, especially Filipino context. Um, so I think that's the space that we're also trying to fill. Yeah. yeah. And so I think why we started it is we just talk like this all the time. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is something when we get together this is where our discussions end up going and i always feel like you say something nice that i'm like oh my gosh i want to remember that and i want other people to hear that <laughs> but they, but there are no people and so i i think for me like what i wanted to do is let's have people listen to you and what you have to say <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> the other way around. I really want people to listen more to you because you, you know, you have so much insight and you know how to ask good questions. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> so there's a little <laughs> love fest. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? Because we already introduced it a little bit, right? But we wanted to talk about Bayanihan in the context of this online space. And so maybe it's helpful if we defined by any end first like how do you understand it yeah so i think like we've been mentioning a while ago um and for those who are just joining in i don't know who's who's watching but thank you if you're watching um so bayanihan has for me it's like a lot about good deeds during doing charitable acts or helping somebody else it's very action oriented and i got to think about it more because i've been writing more about um covid19 articles and a word that comes up a lot is people showing a sense of bayanihan. And because I have to translate it for the news from Filipino to English, um, I had to, to search it. Like, what's the best uh, translation for this? And the closest I could get was a sense of community. But I don't think that captures it exactly. Um, so I think something closer would be like community care. And for those who are not familiar with it, if you've heard, the, heard of the term self-care, which is taking care of yourself so that you can be, it helps you become a functioning person, helps you in your growth. Community care is when, um, I would say, a community comes together and helps take care of other people. Uh, and I think that's, that is also by Lihan. Um, and I think we have, I want to explore it more in the emotional sense or in the, in in a sense that it's not just about actions. Like, what are the values that come with it? Yeah. Right, yeah. So, it's like what you're saying is there are facets to Bayanihan. Parang ganun. Yeah. And I think, like, based on what maybe what we know from grade school and what I'm sure most of our friends know from grade school, it's more of the physical facet of Bayanihan that we are introduced to. Like, Bubuhatin ko yung bahay, kailangan niya ng tulong, or like, ang donate ako, di ba? Yeah. Alay kapwa, you know when we would put like our coins in a in a can? Yeah, I feel like that's the conceptualization of bayanihan that I have. But, no, what I like about what you're saying is, it's also rooted on some values and some mindsets and some attitudes and I don't know about you, but for me, I feel like that's the part we don't talk about a lot, but is even more important. Yes, like it, we have to make it explicit. Why? Why do we bother to um, put such so much so much importance on bayanihan yeah, as a culture, as a people? Yeah. yeah I, oh, why do we bother? Okay, <laughs> maybe that's one of our questions. <laughs> Because so if we didn't explain it earlier, the goal is to come up with three questions at the end of it so that that can be ours and maybe also other people listening. That can be your guide questions as you reflect more on what Bayanihan means for you in this online world. Yeah, but I like your question because like why bother, right? And I think for me, the way I would deepen that is, well, if you think about it, what is the value that you attach to bayanihan like is it is it kindness is it empathy is it um i don't know is it like listening is it is it just like simply being nice and being human i think that's the like i'm at a loss for what that means because 
I've never read anything on that. Yeah. Right? Like, what do you think? Something, yeah, I, I talked about this with you, but to share also with others, um, I just learned to speak of the word Ubuntu. So it's an African term, um, and it's basically my humanity is tied to yours. So they, that's the meaning of Ubuntu. So it, your own identity, I, it's something like I, who I am is because of who you are. So it, it, we have something like that here, like um, kapwa. So the yeah, like, kapwa, um, yeah, being interconnected. Is, yeah. Yes. So psikolohi yung Filipino has that term. So like what we what we learned is in psikolohi yung Filipino, kapwa is like our core construct as Filipinos, which Ooh. means na if you become kapwa to me, I don't treat you as ibang tao, like. Mm. I treat you as one and the same. And so when you're in need, I feel that. And that's why I do something like to help you out. Maybe that's a a value of I mean I don't know exactly if Ubuntu or Kapwa is a value, but maybe it's something to that sense. Yes, that con. Just to clarify also guys, we're not um we're not like linguistic experts. <laughs> we're not uh anthropologists. So I, I would love to get expert opinion on this, but this is just from observation. And I yeah. think, yeah, worth exploring. And I think what we're trying to do is just like connect different um, concepts or contexts that we have encountered. Because we do love like reading up on all these things. And our jobs, I think, expose us to a lot of information. Like yeah, both from, true. you know, your news end and me from like teams and leaders and organizations. And so we just try to make that happen <laughs> yes okay so, so yeah oh go ahead yeah because you mentioned kapwa and i'm just thinking um in social media i've seen so many good things happen like people raising millions of pesos like i'm like wow this is <laughs> this is really great um strangers donating and all that at the same time i've also seen so much viciousness um, I think it's even heightened, it's aggravated even more now, I guess, because we don't get to see each other and we're just talking through screens. So what I'm wondering is how can we still have that sense of kapwa or sense of bayanihan or connectedness, even when we are, we, are all, we all have to stay at home and we yeah. cannot see each other face to face. How do we keep that? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense because like, Remember, like, Brene Brown? I think it was Braving the Wilderness. I'm not sure. But you know how she said, like, it's harder to hate when you're up close yes. to the person? No, but I get your point. Like, when, when we're all online, you can't get up close like, like you would in person, right? And so it's, I guess it's easier to hate. And you forget na we're all in one community and we have to care for each other. Yeah. How do we, yeah, how do we keep that? And I just also want to cite how, like, the algorithms and social media actually make it harder to do that. Although there are some Facebook groups, which I'm a part of, which I love. I, I mainly stay in dog Facebook groups because I've noticed others can get really toxic. It can get really cliquish. Um, I don't know why, but that may, I don't know, the dog people are nicer. <laughs> Maybe they're happier because dogs make you happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so aside from that, um, the algorithms on social media, and this is based on research and studies, there was this Atlantic article that came out in December 2019. I have to cite our sources because we want to stay factually <laughs> correct. Um, and I love this line. It said, the problem may not be connectivity, but the way social media turns so much of communication into a public performance. So, yeah, so as much as social media has gotten us connected, it's also a lot of grandstanding. You know, you make a post and you kind of put value on that post because of the number of likes and shares and comments. And, that, and the thing also about that is there was a study in 2017 and um, on Twitter, it showed that for every word used that was moral or emotional, the virality increased by 20%. So I guess the more controversial or contentious yeah. it was, 
the more, the more engagement it got. Yeah. So and and it's those comments or those um, posts that stay on your feed more, mm-hmm. more than like a long. I would say more than like a long drawn out debate mm-hmm. where it's really well thought of and well researched. <laughs> oh, that super makes sense. Because, like, um, I read this book. So, this book is called Questions Are the Answers. It's by Hal Gregerson, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not very good with names. You know that. Yeah, so, like, <laughs> um, so, this guy, who's the author of the book, he's, like, the executive director of MIT's leadership program. So, what he said was, it's not that our issues now are more divisive or are more opposite. Like like 20 years ago, 50 years ago, issues were that contentious and you know people debate about it. It's just now, it's like we're more sure about our stance even though we, yeah. we don't really have enough information. And so I guess what yeah. you were talking about, like social media contributes to our being so certain that we don't really look for other arguments because other people already reinforce us and say, oh, yeah, yes, yes, I feel yeah, preach, yeah. Or, right? Or I also feel like we don't get to argue as well because we don't do research before we post because it's so easy. Like, I could just share an article and be like, yes, yes, I'm so mad, I agree. Yeah, it's- it happens to like people, they just react in headlines. I mean, I, I know because I work in news, so I see it a lot. Like, oh, no, you didn't read what was inside. And it's so hard because, you know, you want to you wanna make sure your article gets read and you also don't want to be clickbaity. You want to be as interesting, but you also you want to be accurate and interesting. It's just a hard balance to do with the current algorithm. And um, at the same time, the, that art, that Atlantic article also mentioned that in the past, um, a lot of the information was kind of filtered out. You know, like um, it had to go through, like the storytelling had to go through certain authorities before it could be put out. But now anyone can say anything, so a lot of the information now is like that, not verified. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I've been thinking like, and it's it's good that we can all share so easily. I mean, I feel like there's so many pros to that, but I like your point about how before it would go through more, I don't, is the word you use? Like filters. scrutiny? Filters, yeah. Yeah, 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 something like so that. So I wonder mm-hmm. like, no, I just started getting this idea, like what if Bayanihan or that concept of it can be used as a lens to understand and to know like what do I post? What am I reading? So it's yeah. it's like it's like the responsibility to understand what we're seeing online becomes our own and then we get to choose what lens we use as we read yeah. or as we yes. respond. Does that make sense? Yes, that really makes sense. It does. Like how do we it kind of gives more intentionality because we want to acknowledge also that there's a human on the other side of that screen. You know, I think we have to remember that also. Like, when there's all these very fired up posts. Um, and if you disagree with them, you know, automatically you want to attack that person. I would mm-hmm. say that's a knee-jerk reaction. But I think we have there has to be a way, especially now, that we have no choice but to be, uh, to be online and stay at home. Um, to to remind us of that that humanity yeah. in an online space. Well, I guess this is something you encounter more than me. But let's say, for example, that if you were using the lens of Bayanihan as you search through maybe comments or posts or you know whatever, how do you do that? Like, <laughs> how do you how do you do that in your job? Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> so. I'm really thankful to my editors, um, especially my my supervisor, for helping me with that. Because before we put out an article, we really try to be as objective as possible. Um, which is, you know, almost impossible, but objective in the sense that we show both sides. And so when I have to research about certain reactions or certain comments, um, I have to make sure, one, that the person is a real person. So I... I check the person's profile and I look at 
Facebook or Twitter, I look through their old posts just to check if it's a troll. Mm-hmm. I don't want to put out any troll posts. Um, and then even if it's a even even if it's an argument or a post I disagree with, but it's a real person and they're making a valid point. Um, it can go in an article. Another thing we also avoid um, including in articles is when they curse at people. I think what I don't like also is how dehumanizing people can get online, even more online. Um, both sides of whatever political spectrum call each other stupid, tanga, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, bobo. Um, and it's, yeah, so those are comments that I that we avoid using in an article. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I like your point about how it's it's more dehumanizing. Because cause then, I think bayanihan comes from this place where you're humanizing the other person. And that's what pushes you to like, okay, you gotta do something to, to get that person to a better quality of life or something. I don't know. So, and what you're sharing about, like how you research that person who comments, it reminds me of, what Malcolm Gladwell was saying. So like he was saying that a lot of our interactions with strangers, they go so, so, so wrong. It's because we don't know the context of that person. Like, like we don't take the time to try to understand, okay, where did this person grow up? Where did they come from? And like in high pressure situations, you can see in a man, you don't have time to stop and ask those things. But I guess when you're online, like that's the beauty of it that yes. you don't have to respond so fast. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I guess that's one that's- benefit of online. Like it's not it's not like I can see you thinking. You know, yeah. like it, you can really take your time to craft a thoughtful reply. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that we can also consider because if it tends to be so reactive. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, an issue breaks out, somebody says this. And we're not, I, I don't want to say that you're not allowed to get angry. Angry is angry is a good emotion. I don't want to make it, vilify it. It's a good emotion in the sense that it alerts you to injustice. It gives you the energy to fight injustice. But um, the, the other responsibility we have now also is to regulate that. Like, how can we channel that into in such a way that it's productive and with social media how can we if we are angry or emotional how can we use that for for good yeah yeah no i i super like that point because like in coaching for example what we do is like yes of course let's honor that emotion like you are angry and that's where you are now it's not a bad thing but what i also like to ask people is well, what is the value of what you just read? Like, what makes it so important for you that you got angry or you got sad? Because I feel like a lot of us, we just say, now, oh, like, I'm so mad. But you start asking, well, what what is your value that you feel was violated by this specific news? Yeah. And then we don't know why. But I think for me, it's a little bit more productive when we start to think about what makes this matter because then you can connect it right because then you can connect it with like maybe what you do in your job and what kind of impact you want to make in the world because then yeah it's not just about like oh i'm so mad but now it becomes okay this makes me mad and then what yeah i think it's a good question what makes this matter when you okay. if when you want to react to something um and it's something that could could lead to um other kinds of reactions that you that might not be favorable um i think that's one thing you can think about that makes us matter yeah so is it questions time <laughs> <laughs> yeah we can i think are we almost at 30 minutes oh my gosh <laughs> yeah so now people can see, like, we can just go on and on. This is how we operate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, no, question I, yeah. Um, What was the question you just said? What makes this matter? Said, okay. yeah. What makes this matter? I think before that, though, it's very useful if, 
we individually try to define like what do I va- like what value no, no no it's like what is bayanihan for me and what is the value I associate with it because mm. then I feel like we have different interpretations of it right but the more clear I am about it as an individual then the more it can be tied to to me and what I can uniquely do and contribute yes okay I like that okay that's our first I think the first yeah is thinking about in the first place is thinking about bayanihan when even when you're online yeah Ooh. So I guess you're more so that you're also more intentional about how you use social media. Right? So it makes you think yeah. more about what you're liking, what you're sharing, or what you're commenting on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that. Maybe our second question can be something to that. What you said about social media. Like, do we take time to observe what we're reading and what we're saying? Mm. Now that I think about it, I'm like, if I were to put into themes or categories the things I gravitate towards, like what would those categories be? You know what on, I mean? You mean on social media? Online, yeah. Like, do we even understand individually what do we do there? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But what I noticed, um, I don't know if you've, you've seen the beta testing of Facebook and Instagram removing likes. I noticed that I was more conscious about, uh, sorry, not more conscious, but I, w- I felt more free to mm-hmm. like or post um, when the likes didn't matter, when I didn't see who was oh. liking it. I don't know. It, it felt, so, of course, on the, and that, that's on the end of the social network, and we don't really have control over that. So I think it's a nice thing. Also, but yeah. we can act that way. But barang, it, even if what I'm saying is unpopular, um, but I feel like it's important, it should be heard, I'll post it anyway. I think sometimes people hold back on that. Like, you, you're not going to post this picture because you don't think it's Instagram-worthy. You're not but really it's something enough, yeah. important <laughs> to you. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah. Something like that. Ooh, okay. Maybe that second question can be like, maybe it's as easy as, what do I do online? What do I do online? Yeah. Or, yeah. What yeah. are you thinking? Something, I don't know if it has to be about impact. Because I, I mean, I love memes. Ooh. I'm mainly on Facebook for memes. So, I don't, about impact, I don't know. <laughs> no, I like, okay, maybe it's a deepening of what do I do online and be like, what is the impact to others of the things that I do online? Parang gadon. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. What is the um, What can? Yeah. What? Maybe you don't know exactly what your impact can be, but you can think about it. Like, what would this mean to another person? Oh, I know. Yeah. I like that. Keep that. What would, what would this, mean this mean to another, another person? person. Okay. Yeah. So if I think about the stuff I do online, what would this mean for another person? Yeah. I'm writing it down. <laughs> Yay, because yeah, I've no, already no. forgotten this is the one we <laughs> talked about earlier. Oh, is that the what makes it matter to me? Yeah, wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we have to go back. <laughs> okay, so, so I think the, the first one is, okay, summary. Number one, what is Bayanihan and what values do I associate with it? Right. Number two is what you just said. What would the, what would my social media activity mean to another person? Yeah. Okay. And then okay. number three is what we figured out before we started summarizing, which is what makes this matter to me? Like after I read something and feel emotional about it, I'll stop and ask myself, what makes this important for me? Right. We got the worst. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> we, we exceeded a bit, but it's okay. By a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. But yeah. Do you have any like last thoughts, last insights? I guess another thing, like, and especially when you're thinking about what would this mean to another person, it's also thinking about the audience that you have. Um, 
yeah, like, who are you, who are you talking to? I know some people, and there's nothing wrong with it, you post for yourself, but, you know, when you put it out there, other people are inevitably, be, if, especially if you make it public, people are gonna read it. Um, you can't, you can't control who's gonna read it. So you have to think about uh, what that could, what, and all the different kinds of people that it could impact. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think for me, if I were to, like, summarize the stuff I've learned, it's about bringing it back to what can I realistically impact in the first place because right right because like that but there's so many things you can do online and you can say i mean really whatever you want to say but at the end of the day it's like you know what you know what you do you know who the people who listen to you are maybe it's related to your job maybe it's related to your friends or colleagues or whatever but at the end of the day that's where it comes down to like what is something you can do to, to change that? And and I think it, it doesn't, it's not saying that you can't just post because you, you believe it and you feel like it, but I feel like it's a deepening of it that yes, say what you believe in, but also do the extra mile of thinking <laughs> and associate yeah. it with something you can act on and do and concretely yes. impact. Yeah. I think it's also besides that great point, accepting what's in your control, and <laughs> you you cannot change people. Mm-hmm. You can only really change yourself. I, I'm saying this also for myself because yeah. it's so <laughs> as somebody who who writes news and tries to be factually correct and still sees like all this um, misleading headlines and stuff. It's so frustrating, but. You know, I'm, I just have to accept. Okay, on my end, at least, I did my part. I'm doing my own research. Um, so, yeah, focus on what, what's in your circles of influence, mm-hmm. circles of control. I don't know. I feel like there's a better psychological term for that. But I think... Scope of what, influence is... is scope of influence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, okay. We got to our three questions, and I think... That was a productive Friday for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to the people who watch. It's yes. so... <laughs> wow. Thank, Thank you for, you for joining us at 7 with us. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We and, hope also mm-hmm. in the future to bring other people into this. So mm-hmm. if, yeah. Maybe we share a bit of like our, vis- our vision. <laughs> well, I think what we want to do is really talk about topics like this and be make it a casual setting where we don't really need to research so much or make slides or whatever but it's it's just a way for us to learn and hear about the opinions of other people and then maybe down the line we'll get like some experts on topics to teach us also yeah but for now this is what you get (laughs) yeah (laughs) us reading whatever we see online from verified news sources (laughs) Yeah, and researched articles. <laughs> okay, well, with that, I think we're I think we're done. Yeah, I'm really I get to spend Friday night with you. I know. And drinking, so my drink is almost done. That's why I think it's a good time to end. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thanks, guys, for yeah. hanging out with us. Yes. Hope thank you for you hanging soon. out. Bye. Bye.